Well, what's going on today, YouTube, and welcome back to the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit like, subscribe, notification bell, all that jazz. You guys know the drill. Anyways, you've clicked on this video because you guys are interested in what MAP running is, what maximum aerobic function running is, looks like, feels like, yada, 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 yada. And in this video, guys, I'm going to take you through what MAP running is, how you calculate it, is this the best way to train for running, is it similar to what I practice, all that good stuff. But first things first, I need to shout out a sponsor, Ship Thrifty. Since holiday season is coming up, guys, you need to figure out the best way to ship your packages for cheaper. Well, Ship Thrifty makes it super simple for you. You just measure out the weight and the dimensions of the package you want to send, send it to Ship Thrifty, and they'll calculate the most competitive, cheapest rate for you guys so you can send your gifts to your loved ones. And thank you, Ship Thrifty, for sponsoring today's video. And if any of you guys want to sponsor these type of videos, drop a link in the comment down below. We would be more than happy to give you guys a shout out. Anyways, guys, back to the video. You're not here for sponsor. You're here for MAF running. So let's begin. Maximum aerobic function is what MAF stands for. M-A-F. If you ever hear somebody talk about MAF or they train by MAF, they're training by heart rate. And to figure out your MAF heart rate, it's a pretty simple addition subtraction calculation. To find your MAF heart rate, you want to take 180 and subtract your age. So you're going to take 180 and subtract your age. And then depending on your overall health, you add or subtract some additional numbers. So if you've been hospitalized, overtrained, or have had surgery in the past two years, and then you subtract another 10 from that number, you then take another five off of that number. If you are overweight, just starting out on running, or if you are currently experiencing the flu, but if you have been running for a year, you have a little bit of base, you've been training, take whatever that number is and add five because you have some experience. You have some muscle memory in your legs. That's just overall gonna help you with your run. You're a little more fit, so you can take on a little higher heart rate. However, though, you don't have to subtract that 10 or add or take away those fives if you have trained or run consistently for two years and have experienced no sicknesses. So that is the formula and the numbers you need to consider when you're looking for your MAP heart rate. So for me, for example, in theory, my MAP heart rate is 180 minus 26. Yes, if you guys thought I was younger, you're wrong. I got you, surprise. 180 minus 26, that gives me a heart rate 154. And then I have been training consistently for <laughs> the past 10 years. <laughs> so. I do qualify for that plus five. No surgeries in the past two years. I don't think I'm overweight, so therefore my calculations are simple. I just take 180, subtract my age, boom, and then I add the five because I've been training. So in theory, my MAP heart rate is 159 beats per minute. Now let's compare this MAP heart rate to the theoretical zones that I've talked about previously on this channel. So if I was to be using heart rate for training for a day, how close is it on my seven layered zone percentage chart right here? How close is that to math? Well, let's start with the ventilatory threshold. You guys know I've talked about finding your ventilatory threshold and keeping your heart rate under your ventilatory threshold if you want to build base and do easy runs. So ventilatory threshold is based off your max heart rate. The highest max heart rate I've seen for myself is 186. Find the ventilatory threshold, you have to multiply that by 76%. So you take 186, multiply by 76%, and we come out with approximately 141 beats per minute. 141 compared to 159. Now that is significantly different in the two that I generally use. And I usually aim towards staying under that ventilatory threshold on my easy days. And I've talked about this before on the channel where 80% of your training, your time in training should be under this ventilatory threshold. That's personally how I like to train and then 20% of your training needs to be above that ventilatory threshold. But now let's compare math running heart rate to my zone chart heart rate. So as we can see here on this chart, we look at zone one, zone two. Zone X is when we start beginning to enter a threshold 
heart rates. For base training, we stay in zone two. For recovery and easy training, we stay in zone one. And these are based off your lactic threshold heart rates. For me personally, I've been using Chorus to record my data, and we've seen that my lactic threshold heart rate starts at 175. Based on that number and this chart, we see that the highest I can go on zone two training, the number I've got to stay under is 90% of that lactic threshold heart rate. 175 beats per minute multiplied by 90% gets us 157 and a half beats per minute. You round that up, that's 158 beats per minute. Very, very similar to that math heart rate. Let's go one step further in these analytics. Our zone one heart rate on this chart ranges from 72% to 81%. You take 80% of 175 and that gets you 140 beats per minute, which is very similar to the ventilatory threshold. Using these data points for comparison, this is the summary I have to come for you guys. Ventilatory threshold is the highest zone one heart rate you can go to, whereas math is the highest zone two heart rate you can go to. When it comes to establishing a training plan, you need to figure out when your hard days are, when your base days are, and when your recovery days are. Generally, the recovery day is going to be the day after your hard workout. And then your base training is just going to be zone two running when you feel a little better, maybe a couple days after that hard workout and you're getting ready, you're amping up for another hard workout. So like I said, I believe ventilatory threshold is zone one training. I do bulk of my training under that heart rate. Base training would be your math training, which would be the highest heart rate you can go until you are going into a lactic threshold heart rate training. And then 20% of my training are days when my heart rate is at 175 or higher, which makes a lot of sense because if I've seen a max heart rate of 184 and I enter a threshold at 175 and based on this chart I only need an extra 5 to 10 percent heart rate bump to get myself into zone 4, zone 5, that confirms that my max heart rate data is accurate, that confirms what a zone 3, zone 4, zone 5 training day looks like, and that confirms what my zone 1, zone 2 heart rate is. So kind of cool, I thought it was pretty cool to do all this math and see how everything kind of lines up and just kind of further proves that you need to be going easy to get yourself ready for the next hard day and then you need to recover appropriately. So one more thing I want to touch on is the physical fitness test to confirm your math training. And you guys are probably going to like this a lot better than the other things I've talked about on this channel. I've talked on this channel, you need to go out for 30 minutes, see how far you can physically go in 30 minutes, and then you use those calculations to find heart rate, training pace, and power. With the math, what you want to do maybe once a month, you want to go do a five mile run, and you want to stay at that peak of that math heart rate. And every month, if you can go a little faster doing that five mile test at that math heart rate, then you're showing improvement and therefore you know you're getting a little faster. So with that said guys, that is my spiel on math. I hope I gave some good scientific data about how you can compare all these charts and effort levels and put them all in perspective into one thing. And if you guys found this useful, comment down below. If you guys want to see anything else from me, like a training plan, covering racing events, maybe running watch reviews, comment down below. I keep telling you guys I'm not going to know what to make if you guys don't comment down below. Other than that, guys, I'm going to end it here. Don't forget Ship Thrifty sponsored this video. Much appreciated to them. And with that said, guys, I hope you have a good day. Get on out there, take a look at your heart rate and just keep monitoring that bad boy. Alrighty guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great one, bye.